Here are my Yamaha speedometer and tachometer gauges. The speedometer has not been uh, fixed and the tachometer one I just got done doing. So I'll show you kind of the quality of what it looked like before. I'll just run some power to this line here. Hopefully you can see that, how dim that is and turn it in the right direction. My tachometer was even worse than this one. That's why I did that one first. And just to give you an idea of the after, let's do the same thing here. If you're trying to test yours at home, your, your black wire coming from your gauge is your ground, and then your yellow is gonna be, let me clamp this, is gonna be your positive. And the blue line is going to be your your backlight your for nighttime driving. But you can see the difference. Hopefully, you can see how much better, more visible that is. So, all right, let's get started. Show you how we did this. So, first thing we're going to do um, is get this electrical tape off of this uh, wiring here because we're going to have to. I uh, wiggled this grommet here out of its little locking hole there and slide that up so that we can get the two pieces apart. Um, and then we're going to need to take like a Dremel. Um, you could use pretty much anything that will basically pop these um, melted, I guess they're like plastic caps that go on these four pins that hold this back part of the gauge together to this uh, the front part here and there's a uh, gasket or an o-ring that runs around this way to keep moisture out so uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and cut this unwrap it and then start to work this grommet out and this grommet you just kind of squeeze it and twist pull just ever so slightly not try not to overdo it because these wires connect to a board just inside this plastic casing just take your time with it don't rush it back and forth and that is plenty apply pressure right to the center of these little rings if you can see those you'll be able to see them on your own gauge it doesn't take much So now we're going to have to do the same thing to, I believe it's these four outer black plastic tabs. You just have to hit them again in the middle and then this whole part will come out and it exposes the LCD screen which we can take apart at that, at that point.
pick a can of air, spray that off. Over gasket off as well. And just like that you have access to your LCD. You can pull this pin apart right here which will give you a little bit more freedom to work with this if you want. You got it. Just put a little bit of pressure with your hand pulling on the wires and then you lift this little center tab and that will slide out. I'm going to clean up my desk. So this black ring around the LCD is like a cradle that holds it to this board here. And it's got these hooks. Some go through the board and some are on the out outer edges. If you just take a small pair of like needle nose, grab on them and just kind of lightly pull them out. The ones that are go through the board, you have to twist them. Hopefully you can see that. Just work your way all the way around. This should just slide off. Just set that to the side. So then you'll be able to pull your LCD screen off. Just like that. And this little gray rubber pad is like your contact points. So you can either try to leave it on there or if it falls out, you just set it back in place, but it just goes underneath the overhang on that LCD screen. So I'm just going to set this to the side for now and focus on the LCD screen. So there's a polarized lens on, on front and back. We're going to uh, use a a razor blade and then scrape them both off. Just get up under the edge. So we're going to need to get some like rubbing alcohol to uh, put on here to get all this glue residue that's still sticky off of there because we want this to be crystal clear. I'm going to do the same for the back. The back has this um, film on it but it's not necessary. when you're replacing with the new polarized film. I'm just going to use a little rubbing alcohol and I put the uh, LCD screen on a piece of cardboard so I can apply a little pressure and not worry about maybe cracking it, or scratching it, Just put a little rubbing alcohol on that leftover glue residue and you can use like a magic eraser works pretty well for 
cleaning it up. You can also use your razor blade lightly. Just have to do this a few times until you get all that residue off, and then you just gotta do both sides. This is really the most tedious part, just getting all this glue off of here. Just using a microfiber towel just to clean it up. Once you get your lens as clean as you want to get it, you're going to need to cut your polarized linear uh, film to go one piece on the front and then one piece on the back. And you can either just lay this on top of your, your polarizing film and trace it and cut it. Just need to make sure that you don't cover up this edge where your that rubber contacts uh, connect the LCD to the um, the main board there. And you can see, I guess, from the side profile that there's like a lip there. Hopefully, you can see that. So when you cut this bottom piece, just make sure it's on this edge, on that inner edge. I just do the same thing top and bottom. So I had already cut my um, pieces I needed for my tachometer out of my first sheet of film. So this is just what I have left, but um, basically you need to cut one strip this way. And you'll need to cut, turn it 90 degrees and cut yourself one strip this way. And one will be for the front and one will be for the back. And after you cut them, I just label them to make sure to keep them separate but you can see as you put them together it goes black if you turn them over you can see through so you want to make sure that they're where it's where you can't really see through them when they're together so one will go on the back side of that screen and the other will go on the top and the ones I'm using these have no um, adhesive these are just straight film with no sticky on either side the LCD um, screen will press the back one and hold it in place and then the cradle that goes over the top has an inner lip which will hold the second one in place over the top of it. It's just an easier process than messing with the the ones with adhesive and getting bubbles and stuff inside them. I mean these are gonna work great and they're not they're never gonna go anywhere. Uh, but it's up to you. You can order the stuff with adhesive or without. I do think this is easier. I did one with adhesive and it was kind of a pain making sure I get it just right. Lined up just perfectly. Don't get any creases or any bubbles. So for ease of use, I would go this way. But if you feel better or more confident with adhesive, then go that way. So to get started, I'm going to just take one of these pieces of film. And now that I've cut it to the right size, I'm going to peel protective coating off of it. And let's just, actually I'm sorry, I need to do it on both sides, not just one side. And be very careful, try to keep your fingers off of it once you peel it. Just 
barely touch the edges. And I'm going to set it just like that. Then I'm going to take the LCD and if you can see that lip on the bottom down here, that face is down. It goes over the gray rubber contact point. Just like that. Okay. Do the same thing on the front one. And just replace this cradle over the top. You've got it in the right place, you'll feel it go down. After your twisted tabs are on, just push all the other ones back into place while squeezing down gently on the whole cradle. I kind of push down and then I twist that bottom so it pulls that hook back up into that board. So then before I put it all back together, I'm gonna retouch my leads and make sure that this thing powers on. Okay, so on the, on the gas, or on the uh, fuel gauge, I guess it is, or this is the miles per hour gauge, you have to use the red and the yellow at the same time to a positive lead. I can get it to make contact. There you go. It's upside down. But hopefully you can see the difference in quality. How it was. That's it. Now we're just going to put this thing back together. It's just going to connect this button connector back in here. Just want to get it lined back up with your four pins into those holes. And then at that point, we're going to set this over here and we're going to mix up little um, plastic welds like a JB weld. So this is a quick five minute setting epoxy. And it comes with a little popsicle stick, so you're just going to mix it. going to give this a good mixing. I'm just going to hold it in place. I'm going to put epoxy right over those pins. Kind of dab it on there to make sure it touches contact with the board and those pins. And then 
also, as I'm doing that, I drag, you can see I kind of drag the epoxy over to the side wall, the casing of the gauge for a little extra support. It's not holding a ton of pressure or weight. The most amount of pressure you might put on this is when you're sliding this grommet back down these wires. You kind of have to pull on them a little bit or hold them in place. So you could put a little upward pressure on that. So you want to make sure you do get plenty of this epoxy in the appropriate place to hold it down. So I'll just kind of work it into these little little small gap areas to help create some extra strength. Just try to keep it off of this lip here because that's where your little o-ring or your seal goes to keep out moisture. Stuff starts to thicken up pretty quickly after it's been mixed so kind of work quickly you got about five minutes or so. That's it, we'll just let this dry up. Let it set for about an hour and then we'll work on the next putting that cap on. Okay, so it's been sitting about <clears throat> an hour and I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the next step. So I need to put this gasket back in place. That's not bad. So you just want to make sure that the um, that gasket or that seal is consistent all the way around, just like that. I'm going to take this mounting plate. I'm going to put these screws on, and this is going going to hold it in place, so that it puts pressure from this top half to the bottom half and holds it nice and snug and then we're going to mix up some epoxy and put some over each of these original plastic points that we grinded off earlier. Kind of tighten this down a little bit, doesn't have to be crazy tight, you just want them snug. Make sure everything looks good. Okay, from that point, I'm going to take a little rubbing alcohol. Clean up around this edge here. Get inside those little divots. I like to take a little sandpaper and just hit this little. edge right here and just kind of scuff this up so it'll help the epoxy to stick a little bit better. So remember this is just a repair we're not trying to make it look like factory again. This is all hidden anyways and I think if I ever had to do this repair a second time I mean these gauges are 15 years old and this is the first time it's ever been done. I think if I ever had to do it again, I would just, at that point, throw this gauge away. 
and get a new one. I get another 10 years out of this would be amazing. I have just a little wire brush. I'll just hit these little divots here, scuff them up a little bit. Okay, and then one more time I'll hit it with some rubbing alcohol. more dust. And there we go. I think that's good enough. So we're going to mix up some epoxy, hit these four points, and then we're just going to smooth a layer across this seam here. I tried before doing it just, just on these four points with the epoxy and it just, it held for about a couple of hours and I could hear it creaking and it eventually was loose. There was, there's so much pressure on this top piece to, to create this seal that I just think it needs more, more uh, contact for epoxy. And like I said, I'm not trying to make this thing look like it did from factory. It just wanted to work correctly. Um, I'm sure there's other methods or other techniques for putting this back together, but this is just the way I chose to do it. Mix it thoroughly. You don't want to go too thick with this because oops, you just don't want it to stick out too far here and then might give you problems installing it back into your mounting hole. I'm just going to continue just to kind of rotate this just for a couple of minutes while this starts to thicken up. And then you can always come back and sand this after the fact if it gives you any problems installing it back into the holes that are cut in your console. 
So it's been sitting up for just over an hour or so. And here's kind of the finished product. So all that's left to do is to slide this grommet back into place. Just kind of squeeze it and push it in, that's all there is to it. And then I'm going to let this sit up overnight before I remove these screws and take this uh, pressure off there just to make sure that this epoxy has plenty of time to cure. <laughs> 